Okay, Knoxville versus Nashville. This is a debate that a lot of people are having when they're thinking about moving to Tennessee. We've got two really great cities with a lot of good positives to both. So today we're gonna jump in and talk about what some of those differences are and why you might wanna live in Knoxville versus Nashville or vice versa. So while I do live in Nashville now, I did grow up in Knoxville. I still spend a lot of time there, so I can really speak to both cities. And like I said, there's just a lot of pros to both, but it is really just gonna depend on what you're looking for in that city where you're moving to. So if this is your first time visiting my channel, my name is Jen Gramling. I'm a real estate agent here in the Nashville area. And if you're thinking about moving or relocating to Nashville or Tennessee, this is gonna be a great channel for you. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be the first to see these videos as they're coming out. So let's go ahead and jump into what some of these differences are between Nashville and Knoxville. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be the population. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the Knoxville metro area's population. Now this should be encompassing most of the surrounding areas and that whole metro area. I know the numbers are gonna be different for just Knoxville, but I'm trying to include all of the surrounding areas so you kind of get an idea of what that looks like with all of the suburbs included. So if we look at the Knoxville metro area population, currently in 2022, it says we have a population in Knoxville of 771,000, and it's been going up about 2% give or take every single year for the last several years. So let's go ahead and let's compare that to Nashville. So if we compare that now to the Nashville metro area population, we've got a population this year of about close to 1.3 million. And again, the same goes for the Nashville population as the Knoxville population. It's growing at about close to 2% every single year. So growing at about the same rate, but Knoxville started at a much smaller number. Nashville started at a much higher number. It was already a much bigger city. So obviously it's much bigger, but as you can see, it's almost double the population of Knoxville. So it's almost twice the size. And Nashville is the largest city in Tennessee, followed by Memphis. And Knoxville is quite a ways behind that as far as population goes. So you are gonna get a much bigger city in Nashville. So if you're looking for you know, a lot more people, a lot more things going on, you're definitely gonna find that in Nashville. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the weather. Okay, so I went ahead and I laid these graphs, one over the top of the other. As you can see right here, we've got Knoxville on the left-hand side, we've got Nashville on the right-hand side and they almost look identical. So if you're comparing weather to weather, you're gonna have almost the exact same thing. So if we compare July to July, we show Nashville as just being a couple of degrees hotter. And so you will see that as kind of a trend. If you look at May, they, Knoxville is 77 and Nashville is 79. If you look at August, 86 in Knoxville, and 88 in Nashville. So almost consistently about a two degree difference throughout the summer. And then in the winter time in December, our high in Nashville is gonna be about 51 degrees. And in Knoxville, it's gonna be 50 degrees. So just one degree different. And then as far as our lows go in Nashville, 32 is typically the low in December and in Knoxville, it's gonna be 33. So really just not much difference at all in the temperatures. But what about humidity? Is there a difference in the humidity? Because that's more the question everyone's asking me when they come here. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up what these averages look like for humidity levels. So we're gonna start with Knoxville right here. If you look right over here at average humidity, January, you've got 78%, May, 77%, July, 77%, August, 76%, September, 77%. So almost across the board until you get to November, 74%. So generally speaking, about 77% humidity is what you're gonna find in Knoxville for average humidity. But let's go ahead and we'll take a look at Nashville. Okay, so if we scroll over here and take a look at Nashville's humidity, We've generally got a little bit lower humidity than Knoxville and not by much, but if you take a look at this, you've got 75% in July, 74% in September, 73% in October. So whereas Knoxville hovers more around that 77%, Nashville is hovering more around that 74, 75%. So again, not a huge difference, but a little less humidity in Nashville. So generally speaking, our weather is pretty temperate in Nashville and Knoxville, very comparable to one another. So Nashville may get a couple of degrees hotter than Knoxville and Knoxville is gonna be a couple of points of humidity a little bit higher than Nashville. So probably all evens out a little bit. But as you can see, nothing majorly extreme as far as weather goes. 
you've got a really nice balance of seasons here in both of these cities. So either one of them, they're really pretty comparable. I don't really think there's a clear winner here. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about the cost of living. So while both cities may be pretty affordable compared to where you may be coming from in other places and maybe not, they aren't really comparable as far as between the two cities go. So Nashville is gonna be quite a bit more expensive to live in than Knoxville right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those numbers. Okay, so if you take a look at this from best places, so they compare Nashville to Knoxville. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so according to their data, Knoxville is 15.7% less expensive than living in Nashville, Davidson County. And it says that Knoxville housing costs are 33.8% less expensive than Nashville. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look at that again in a minute. So 100 would be the national average. And compared to the national average, as you can see here, Nashville, Davidson County is 101.4, making it 1.4% higher than the national average. And the Knoxville market is 85.5%, meaning it's 14.5% lower than the national average. So Knoxville is gonna be a lot more affordable place to live than a lot of other places. So, and it goes down through the list here, you can see groceries are 102 for Nashville, Knoxville is 97. So they're about the same as far as groceries are concerned. Health is concerned, they're about the same. Housing costs is really where you get your biggest discrepancy. And then, yes, here you go, median home cost. We'll get back into that again. I think these numbers are actually a little bit outdated. Utilities are a little bit more expensive in Nashville. Uh, transportation is a lot more expensive. And then just miscellaneous is pretty even. So most of your living expenses are gonna be pretty comparable between the two cities. It's mostly gonna be that housing cost that's gonna make up some of that difference. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those housing costs between the two cities. Okay, so let's take a look at what Redfin has to offer as far as median home prices go. So in the Knoxville housing market, they show that the median sale price of a home is about $307,000. And if we go and we look at Nashville, their median home price is gonna be about 469,000. So quite a bit of difference, about $150,000 difference in the median home price. And that's gonna be within those city limits. You're gonna get quite a bit of discrepancy when you get out into the suburbs as well too, which is another key difference that you're gonna find between the two. Okay, and so if I had to compare housing markets for suburbs, I guess I would probably start with Franklin. So Franklin is one of our more popular suburbs and one of our more expensive suburbs here in the Nashville area. And as you can see here, at least according to Redfin, and I'm using Redfin because I wanna compare apples to apples as far as systems go and data goes. I don't have access to the Knoxville MLS, so I'm just gonna use Redfin to keep it even across the board. So in Franklin, the median home price is $825,000, which is right about right. Um, if you wanna compare that to a suburb in Knoxville, and that's where we're gonna get into some of these differences. Nashville suburbs are a lot more built out, a lot bigger than Knoxville's. Knoxville, you've got some suburbs, but a lot of those are gonna end up being a lot more rural. But if you wanna to try to compare a suburb to suburb, I guess I would say Franklin is probably the closest to either one, Maryville, which you can call it Maryville, don't call it Maryville. You wanna drop that Y, at least call it Maryville. Otherwise, you're not gonna fit in, so we don't want that. So if you look at Maryville's housing costs, and that's just a suburb of Knoxville, their median home price is $375,000. So as compared to $825,000, you've got a great big discrepancy here. People love Maryville, a lot of people are moving there. It's actually my hometown where I grew up. If you had told me, you know, 20, 30 years ago that people would be moving there like crazy from California, I never would have believed you. But nonetheless, $375,000 is the median home price there. And it is a great, cute little town with a little historic downtown, great people, lots of great things about it. And that median price, it's less than half of Franklin. And then if you wanna compare, you can also look at Farragut. It is a really nice area. So I'm just gonna kind of include this and it's a little bit more expensive, so it might be more comparable. So yes, as you can see, median home price, $655,000 in Farragut. And as you can see, it's just a small little area Close in to downtown Knoxville is right here, and it's just tucked in right here. It's just a small little pocket. I would say in some ways it's comparable to that Franklin area, but not 100%. Anyway, a really nice area and a place that people are really attracted to, like they're attracted to Franklin. So Farragut and Maryville, I feel like are both kind of good comparisons as far as that goes. But even between the two, Nashville comes out to be the much higher priced 
as far as downtown living goes and as far as suburb living goes, you're definitely gonna pay more to live in that Nashville area. And that's where that higher cost of living comes in. Okay, and so one of those key differences that I did wanna talk about is just those suburbs of the city. So we'll talk about the downtowns in a little bit, but suburbs to suburbs, Nashville, as I said a minute ago, the suburbs are just much more built out. They're much, much larger. So if you take a look at the population, again, of Franklin, you're looking at about 90,000 people. It'll probably be 100,000 very soon. And Maryville being one of the larger suburbs there in the Knoxville area is still 30,000 people. So it's very, very small. And then when you get out into some of those suburbs, you're gonna have a lot more rural areas. So you are gonna have some nice neighborhoods and things built up, but you are gonna have just lots of rural open space. If you're looking for more space to get out and breathe without everything on top of each other, a lot of those suburbs out and surrounding Knoxville, you're gonna be able to find that space a lot easier than you're gonna be able to find it in Nashville because a lot of these suburbs that are very close into the city, again, they're gonna be very built up with a lot more houses going in. So just keep that in mind. So many people come here looking for that open space, that added, and just not to be very congested. And you will find that probably a little bit more outside of Knoxville than you'll find it outside of Nashville. Now you can find it outside of Nashville, don't get me wrong, but you may have to go a little bit further out to find it than you have to go outside of Knoxville to find it. Okay, so how are we gonna to afford to live in these cities? So let's check out some of the job markets and see how those stack up. We're gonna head back to best places again to see, to check out what information they have on our job markets. Okay, so as of 2022, unemployment rate in Knoxville is gonna be about 4.7% and Nashville 4.5%. Recent job growth, which is a great indicator. Nashville is Nashville has grown by 2.4%, while Knoxville at 0.9%. Future job growth is higher for Nashville than Knoxville again at 38% over 37.5%. But both of these future job growth numbers are higher than the national average, which is a really great indicator saying, both cities future job growth is higher than a lot of other places that you could be so that's really really great and again jumping back to unemployment rate that is lower than the national average also at six percent so that's also really good income per capita thirty-one thousand for nashville twenty-four thousand for knoxville so as expected it should be a little bit lower for knoxville with our cost of living being a little bit higher in nashville and then household income again is going to be a little bit higher in nashville than knoxville and then family income, again, higher. So that's to be expected. Uh, but this future job growth numbers in both cities is gonna be great. There are a lot of really great opportunities coming into both towns, a lot of big corporations moving into both places. We've talked a lot about the huge Amazon center that they've put into Nashville with Oracle moving their headquarters here and moving tons of jobs. You've got GM expanding their plant down towards Spring Hill with tons of jobs coming in there and just lots and lots of companies relocating to Nashville. But what about Knoxville? Knoxville has tons of companies moving there as well. You have companies like Smith & Wesson who are moving into that Maryville area. So $125 million investment with 750 jobs are moving into that Blount County. And according to this article on Channel 10 News, just some of the businesses headed to Knoxville include electric vehicle manufacturers, battery companies, TV production companies. And a lot of these businesses are moving here because of that lower cost of living coupled with no state income tax a more business friendly environment and just a better lifestyle altogether. So there's a lot of reasons why companies are relocating not just to Tennessee, but to East Tennessee as well as Middle Tennessee. So I think you're gonna see a lot more of that. And as people start to pick up on more people moving to that East Tennessee region of Knoxville, you're gonna see more of those companies continuing to move in that direction because of the affordability, but all the benefits still of being in Tennessee. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sports. So Nashville obviously is going to have a lot more of the pro sports and they're also going to have college sports. So you're going to find the Tennessee Titans here. You'll have the Nashville Predators here for hockey. And we just built a new 30,000 seat soccer stadium for our soccer team. And then we also have Vanderbilt sports and many other universities here in the Nashville area. And so we've got tons and tons of sports. There's no doubt about it. But so what about Knoxville? No pro sports there, right? But in Knoxville, you don't have pro sports, but what you do have is the University of Tennessee. And University of Tennessee is a longtime legacy. People who grew up there, who have always lived in Tennessee, absolutely love Tennessee sports. And I'm here to tell you, Tennessee sports are fantastic. And if you've never been to an SEC sporting event, there's absolutely nothing like it. 
you need to go. Whether you're a fan or not, you probably will be by the time you go to one of these games. So let's talk about those a little bit because SEC and University of Tennessee is kind of a way of life if you live in Knoxville. So I know some people wanna bash on my UT football, but let's just take a look. Let's revisit and talk about UT football. Yes, we've had a few bad years and we've been rebuilding for a long time, but that's okay, because we're gonna get there. But take a look at this. So not to waste too much time on this because I do love my UT Vols. The Tennessee Volunteers have a .671 winning percentage, which is ranked as the 10th highest winning percentage in college football history with a minimum of 500 wins. So yes, according to this, Tennessee football does still rank in the top 10 all time, even with the trouble of the 2000s still underway to an extent. And it is also worth noting that Tennessee Volunteers still hold the second best winning percentage among all SEC teams as well. Tennessee is only ranked behind SEC West rival Alabama. And again, let me just tell you, if you've never been to a Tennessee football game, there's absolutely nothing like it. It is so much fun. And okay, if football's not your thing, let's talk about the Lady Vols. And that would be our women's basketball program at University of Tennessee. So the Lady Vols is one of the most respected women's basketball programs. They've won 17 SEC tournament championships, made 18 Final Four appearances, and won eight national championships. They are always a great program. They are always amazing to watch. And what about baseball? Tennessee was number one for most of the year, being the number one seed going into the finals. Unfortunately, they lost their bracket and did not go on to the World Series. Last year, again, they were number one for a better part of the year. And then for men's basketball, again, seems like we've had some tough losses this year, but they were hoped to win the national championship this past year. They did fall, but they had an amazing season and the basketball program is always great as well. University of Tennessee excels at so many sports, so you do have some amazing sports to watch. And if you need those pro sports, it's only a three hour drive to get to Nashville. So feel free, come to Nashville, watch the Titans, and then you can also enjoy some of those college sports, SEC sports. In Knoxville. All right, let's talk about the downtown nightlife, shopping, and all of those things. So obviously Nashville is a much bigger city. You're going to get a lot more nightlife. It's also Nashville. So it's pretty hard to compare anybody's nightlife to Nashville. If you love going out, you love seeing live music, and you want to be out until four in the morning, Nashville is a place to do that. There's going to be live music all the time. There's festivals all the time. You're always going to be able to go and see music, go out to a bar, get some great dinner. There's tons of restaurants and there's lots of shopping here in Nashville. If you want some of those traditional things like going into downtown Nashville, you can go places like the Bluebird, places that you can't get anywhere else and Tootsies and some of those honky tonks and things. Nashville really has its very own charm. There are areas where you can get outside of that, like 12 South and East Nashville, where it's not as loud, it's not as much, it's a little more tame, but you can still catch live music anywhere, anytime, till almost any time in the morning. I mean, that's the beauty of Nashville, being able to go out at any time and just listen to amazing music, amazing talent at all kinds of different places. Nashville truly is one of a kind when it comes to its music scene and its nightlife. But what about Knoxville? Knoxville's got some great options too. So Knoxville has this really cute area called Market Square with some fantastic restaurants and great places to shop. Still gonna have a nice mix of places where you can go out and eat and places where you can walk around and enjoy that nightlife. Just take a look at this. If you wanna zoom in here and you're looking for great places to eat and wondering if there's anything to do in downtown Knoxville, take a look at all of these fantastic restaurants that you can find right here in this Market Square area. But, and I want you to please note, like look at all of these restaurants with all of these reviews, all being four and a half, four stars with 1500 reviews and 2300 reviews. I mean, these are fantastic restaurants with just a ton of variety of different places to choose from. You have Japanese, you have sushi, you have breweries and pubs. I mean, there's so much that you can do in downtown Knoxville and it's maybe just not as extra as Nashville, which for some people is really great. And I will say they have done a really good job in that old town and Market Square, different areas of downtown Knoxville. They've done a really good job of revitalizing it, making it super cute. They have a really cute farmer's market down there on the weekends. 
So it is really, really nice. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about outdoor activities. So Nashville has a lot going for it by way of outdoor activities. There's tons of places where you can get out. I talk a lot about Percy Warner Park, where you can get out and hike, you know, just tons and tons of trails. You can trail run, you can trail bike, you can do all those kinds of things in the beautiful parks and different hiking areas that they have. We've got the Harpeth River where you can get out and you can canoe and you can kayak and enjoy those river sports. We do have lakes here. We've got Percy Priest and Old Hickory Lake, both of which are great to get out on and enjoy some water sports. Great to live on and super fun, really convenient if you live in the Nashville area. And then if you go a little bit further south and a little bit west, you can get over to the Natchez Trace Parkway. There's tons of hiking out that way. Beautiful scenic place to drive, to hike, and again, just to get out and to just enjoy some of that outdoors. And then also downtown, there's tons of parks, Centennial Park, places where you can get out where they have outdoor concerts and just hanging out on the lawn, set up a volleyball net and play. Like there's a lot of different things that you can get out and enjoy the outdoors here in Nashville. And then Knoxville, again, just has kind of a different array of things that you can enjoy as well. So in Knoxville, you're a lot closer to the Smoky Mountains. So it's gonna be 30, 45 minutes to get up into the mountains, which if that's what you love to do, that is super close and a really great thing to go enjoy. You can go hiking in Cades Cove. You can go fly fishing in the rivers up there. A lot of really great places to explore up in the Smokies. You can get to Gatlinburg really quickly and Pigeon Forge if you want that weekend getaway up there and Dollywood. Please don't forget Dollywood. I love Dollywood. I'll take it all day over Disney. They have tons of great roller coasters and rides and it's really beautiful and landscaped and green. Tons of trees and shade. So it's a really beautiful park. If you've never been to Dollywood, I highly recommend it. It's amazing. And then of course we can't forget the lakes in Knoxville. Lakes in Knoxville, we do have some, like I said, in Nashville, but the ones in Knoxville are really, really big. It's really just the Tennessee River that's been dammed up and turned into lakes. So, I mean, truthfully, you can get to the Gulf of Mexico from our lakes in Knoxville. You've gotta go through some locks and some dams and it's about 600 miles, but if you wanted to do it, you could do it and commercial vehicles do that. So that tells you how big those lakes are. Really, they go all the way to the Gulf of Mexico if you wanted to take it that far. So you could be out there on your boat, enjoying your water sports. You can go all day and never get to the end. So there's tons of restaurants and things on the lake. So if you get tired of boating, pull over, get something to eat and get back in your boat and go back to your water sports. So lake life is pretty fun in Knoxville. But again, both cities have great outdoor activities and tons of things to offer as far as the outdoor goes. So really both cities have so much going for them. They are both amazing places to live. As I said, I've lived in both places. I enjoy them both so much. It really just depends on what you're looking for. The best advice I can give to anyone who's considering either or is to go visit both. They're only about three hours apart. So plan a trip, go and visit Nashville for a few days and then go spend a few days in Knoxville and see which one fits you better. Because inevitably you'll find one that you definitely like better than the other and that's where you belong. But again, if you're thinking about moving to either or, you can definitely reach out to me and ask me any questions that you have. If you need help finding an agent for that Knoxville area, be sure to reach out to me for that. I can also refer you over to someone over there who can help you out. If you're looking for my contact information, you can find it in the comments. I'll also link it right here. So be sure to reach out to me with any and all questions. I'd be happy to help. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next video.